the configuration tab here, load cell calibration is on the far left. So this is only valid for dynos equipped with uh, an eddy current brake and a load cell. So by clicking on this, we're going to calibrate our load cell. Uh, if your dyno installer or you hadn't done this or you're installing your dyno yourself, the first day you get your dyno, it's very important to calibrate your load cell using the, the arms and the weights that were shipped with your dyno. So in just follow these instructions here to click next, it would zero out that load cell. Then you would add your weight on your first retarder or index of zero, the amount of weight that you're putting on there, and then click next to calibrate it uh, after doing so. And this will write the data file or write the configuration, the slope of those two points from no weight being applied to then having weight being applied of how that load cell is reading and the torque that it's going to relay to the dyno main box as a valid value of torque or press finish when done here since that was our first load cell if you do have an automotive dyno or more than one of the load control and retarders you would continue this process on your your zeroth index and then your first index or your second index all the way through until completion each one being individual per the dial the retarder controller and which indicates its index next up is our pid configuration these come preset to work well in most cases if you're having trouble managing an engine speed with our factory pids we do have a descriptor here of how to actually tune them you know zeroing out i and d and starting with a small amount of the the proportional pid here um, can help you better hold a bike or a vehicle on a dyno at a spec RPM, et cetera. Whether that be engine speed, speed, acceleration, you can fine tune those by default or, or away from our defaults to your own custom load control source set points. These of course can vary by the power that your dyno is connected to, whether you're running straight 208 or even 220, 240, it all depends on your electrical uh, grid and capacity to help with the eddy current brake again these performances are um, reasonable standards but based on your other conditions or even your bike build it may take a little bit of tweaking on these uh, load test configuration so this structures the eddy current load absorption unit via the integrated torque cell uh, to walk you through a potential step test you can have a start value start at 3000 rpm hold each of those steps for five seconds and increment at 500 rpm you can also have a sweep you know starting at 35 miles per hour stepping five mile per hour holding for five seconds and using these pids that we just discussed it will walk the vehicle through that amount of that that test using load control to hold it at, at specific values there's also custom tests available where you can have your own sweep based on whatever channels uh, you can you know have your x channel be based on speed or engine speed and based on Break percent. You can save and import these templates of how you have set up your custom load test as well. Uh, there's also a road load simulation where you would enter your make, model, and vehicle here, or you can just input your vehicle's weight, however much it weighs, the frontal area, and its coefficient of drag to then customize the road load simulation and use that as a new load test. There's also warm-up. Uh, this can just cycle your bike back and forth through a set of RPM or speeds. Um, so this is good for breaking in a brand new engine. It'll let you accelerate at a certain rate uh, and then decelerate you. And then you can jump to the next throttle position. So this is good for uh, brand new engines when you want to break them in. Next up, if we did have one of our uh, Dynojet OBD modules connected, this plugs directly into the vehicle's OBD port and brings data from that ECU or, or vehicle into the Dyno RT. You can use this on CAN-based vehicle ECUs, and it can be that supplemental RPM signal, which we talked about in a prior video, to get that RPM source from the OBD module and any other number of channels which your vehicle may be streaming. Uh, maybe it's streaming engine temp and throttle position for you. You could get that over OBD. The Elm 327 configuration, this acts as a link between the vehicle ECU and your computer. So this is a, an aftermarket, uh, not a, not a Dynojet uh, delivered device, but functions the same way as an OBD module to get that data from the ECU or the vehicle into a DynoRT box and the software to be used just like an OBD module would. 
PowerVision configuration. The PVOG is the most powerful and quickest flash tuning device for Harley Davidson motorcycles. The PV is a performance tuner and data monitor device offering the latest flash tuning technology, data logging, and other industry exclusives only found on the PV. You can use this to flash your bike or to use AutoTune or any other facets about the PowerVision. So with this connected, uh, if you had a device connected, you would enable logging. Uh, if you had a PV plugged in and then keep logging enabled uh, the next time you would, would connect. So PowerVision configuration takes the data directly from the bike and pipes data into, into PowerCore.